The Future According To, an audio column about future developments in tech, science, society, and culture, exclusively on BMW.com. This time, The Future of Design with Zimona Yama. My name is Simone Yama, and I'm a lead expert for design and experience foresight, and I deal with futures at BMW Design. It goes without saying that we don't have a crystal ball. Neither can we predict the future like we do the weather. However, we have developed a design foresight program that helps us identify important knots for future design. At BMW, our vehicle design process lasts roughly five years. And the vehicles themselves have a certain lifespan that defines how long they can be driven. This means we always have to integrate longevity and zeitgeist into our designs. A process of continuous foresight is required if we are to stay ahead in an increasingly complex and fast-moving world. Consequently, we need a sound body of knowledge that we can access quickly, both for long-term visionary projects and when fast reactions are required. To give a better impression of the role played by future design and our constant attempts to refine the art of looking ahead, I would like to pose a few of the questions we ask ourselves as a team and explain how we look for answers. First of all, one future or different futures? In recent times, the preoccupation with futures seems increasingly complex. Globalization, digitalization, climate change, and in addition, the perceived acceleration of everyday life. We live in times of uncertainty. Political categories of left and right seem to be dissolving. Trends are also no longer developing in a linear fashion. We observe a simultaneity of trend and counter-trend. Just one brief example. Everything around us is becoming more digital. Yet people are increasingly longing for nature and naturalness and for more conscious experiences. We use filters for our images and faces, but we also want our content to be more authentic and we celebrate flaws and irregularities. We are extremely ironic on social media, but at the same time we celebrate the things we joke about and take them seriously. One exceedingly important principle. We need to accept that we can no longer know absolutely everything. We can't reduce these imponderables and uncertainties. We can only study them and learn to deal with them. We have to navigate uncertainty. How does this work? We often think of the future as a linear timeline, the one future. If we only think about the future in singular, It might signal us that there's nothing to change about it. The future is then often seen as inevitable, something fixed to which we react to. However, if we wish to take on a more active role, it pays to develop a variety of perspectives of the future. To reflect on different spheres of possibility so that we can create room for maneuver and move from acting to reacting. What is important is that we can actively influence the futures. But how exactly can we exert this active influence? When we started our work in 2011, access to information was more limited compared to today. Nowadays, we have more of an information processing problem. And our job is now to curate this information with an eye to shaping the futures. The questions now are, where do we start and how do we approach these futures? From the ground up, we believe that new things arise from the contemplation of what has been and from constant interaction with the present. So rather than making forecasts, we develop strategic foresight by observing the present. We are not interested in short-term trends but rather in long-term developments that drive systemic change. Let's look at the pandemic as a brief example. How are brands and people reacting to the pandemic? In terms of the way we interact with other people, for example, or how we work and consume. 
What adjustment strategies have been developed? What kinds of new behavior are emerging at this time? All this in an increasingly digitized world through which we are moving with increasing assurance. This is how new hybrid concepts of living, working, learning and consuming are into being. This fusion is in turn giving rise to new metrics, for example, how performance is measured. Something else that has changed? We are becoming increasingly sensitive. People are protecting each other's vulnerability. They are becoming more receptive to the fates of others and learning to stand in solidarity with them, says philosopher Svenja Flasspöhler. With this in mind, mental health and well-being, and we are talking about mindful well-being, not wellness, will become more important than anything else in the years to come. And this refers not only to us, but also to the planet. And then how important is continuous dialogue? How important is an exchange at eye level? We look at the world with curiosity and openness. We look for so-called weak signals that can tell us something about future developments. We are not only interested in the developments taking place in the design field. Much more than that, we want to know what is happening in areas like technology, art, science, AI research, material research, fashion, and of course society and changes in behavior, so that we can identify knots that are important to us as designers. In doing so, we do not revolve around ourselves, but have developed a satellite model. Together with our colleagues at DesignWorks in Los Angeles, Shanghai and Munich, we observe global development through various local lenses. We also talk as much and as often as possible with different experts, progressive, open-minded people and leading minds. We believe that constant interaction with a variety of perspectives facilitates deeper contemplation of the futures. This action also represents what BMW embraces with the term forwardism advocating that the world can be different than it is now. The question of the future is always closely linked with a commitment to change in the present. And that is why it's important to communicate on an equal level with forward-looking minds. It goes without saying that we always do this with an awareness or a filter of what drives us here at BMW Design and what is currently galvanizing the company like sustainability, circularity, and humanity in a digitized world. Well, what does this mean for design in and of the future? Here are three examples. We are living in a time of transition, and the question now is how do we shape and design for faces like these? To make progress, we first have to fundamentally rethink and even unlearn old processes and develop a new hybrid way of thinking about overlapping realities. We need to design for maximum flexibility and open systems, rather than always keeping our sights on the finished product. Instead, we follow the principle of elegant efficiency. Frugality is not a lack of ambition, but rather a tool for freedom. Leaving things out makes us freer. The fewer tools, materials, presets and customized features we put into something, the easier it is to produce. The simpler and more reduced an object comes into the world, the easier it is for it to adapt to changing circumstances in the future. The more modular and even more important consequently circular a product is, the easier it adapts. Or think about the ability of updating and upgrading hard and software. This all helps a product to stay fresh and relevant during its life cycle. Secondly, another task for designers that I think will be coming increasingly important is finding supportive collaborations and the curation of these partnerships. When you give your partner agency, you create more valuable relationships. And through that, you can find new answers to the big challenging questions. And of course, we need to design virtual and simulated worlds virtual and augmented realities that offer experiences that are just as meaningful as those in the analog world. We are right there with German futurist Matthias Hawks. Good design shapes processes instead of things, relationship instead of surfaces. And finally, how do I personally see the future? 
am very optimistic. I'm looking forward to it. We have developed a highly sensitive radar that allows us to pinpoint global signals from the futures and for the futures. It provides orientation in a world of uncertainty and enables us to make sustainable decisions. And that is exactly what our radar gives us. Our goal is to generate enthusiasm for positive futures. Most important of all, we can actively co-create our future. As designers, we have the opportunity to drive positive change. Through design, we can shape the future. And that's a prospect that fills me with joy.